delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, very warm welcome to you all uh, to this side event uh, this afternoon. Um, and uh, I should also say, since this is being broadcast on the internet, welcome to everybody also watching on YouTube. Uh, this is a side event uh, on uh, the release of the geospatial uh, practices for sustainable development in Southeast Asia 2022, a compendium. This actually is the second edition of a report released by the SCAP Secretariat every two years at the request of our member states. This report informs on policy actions and provides a resource for the implementation of the Asia Pacific Plan of Action on Space Applications for Sustainable Development for the years 2018 to 2030. Uh, sorry, yes, 2018 to 2030. This, this edition has a Southeast Asia focus and features contributions, contributions from space agencies, uh, sectoral line agencies, United Nations, and other uh, development partners. I would now like to actually introduce you all to our distinguished speakers. First, we have, of course, uh, Ms. Armida Salcia Alas Chibana. Under Secretary General of the United Nations and Executive Secretary of ESCAP. Uh, joining her is Mr. Uh, Mego Perendito, Deputy Chairman of, uh, for Policy and Development of the National Research and Innovation Agency of Indonesia. And then we have Mr. Joel Joseph S. Marciano, Jr., who's the Director General of the Philippine Space Agency. Uh, we also then have uh, Tatia uh, Chuntagan, who is the Deputy Director of uh, Chista from Thailand. Mr. Ronald Tong, who is the Deputy Executive Director Designate of the Office uh, for Space Technology and Industry. Uh, of the economic and uh, of, of sorry of the economic development board of Singapore, we have Ms. Tiziana Bonapace, who is the director of the Information and Communication Technology and Disaster Risk Reduction Division at SCAP, and finally Mr. Kuran Wong, chief of the Space Applications Section at SCAP, who will moderate the sharing of countries' perspectives. As we get underway with a side event this afternoon, may I? Please invite uh, Ms. Armida Salsi Alice Chibana to deliver her initial remarks. Thank you very much, Mitch. Uh, colleagues, friends, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the site event. Uh, this afternoon, uh, it is indeed my immense pleasure to give a very brief, a quick remarks. Uh, to open this site event. I remember, I think it was two years ago, yeah? We launched uh, the previous compendium in Jitsda, in Thailand, in your uh, office, where was it? In in, in uh, Sirachat, yeah, in Sirachat. Yeah? That was two years ago, in the midst of COVID-19, yeah? Everything was still closed, and I visited Jitsda. Uh, and graciously uh, hosted by Jista, uh, the, the chairman was there and so on. So we launched the compendium, and in which at that time, uh, Minister Pak Bambang Brojonegoro, Pak Bambang masih Menristek, yeah? Man Menristek, uh, he also kindly gave uh, sort of uh, welcoming or opening remarks. Yeah. So uh, move forward, fast forward. Again, time really flies. Yeah. So already two years from that occasion, now is again uh, the time when we launch uh, this year's compendium in which uh, this year's or this edition of compendium specifically focuses on Southeast Asia. Uh, that's why we have colleagues from several Southeast Asian countries to my left from Philippines, uh, from Indonesia, from Thailand, as well as from Singapore. Yeah? in which they will showcase uh, the good example, the best practices of the space application for sustainable development 
in particular the six priority areas yeah, that uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar not only for disaster risk reduction but also for environmental not environmental but natural resource management energy connectivity uh, social as well as uh, I think uh, six yeah so the six area will be showcased uh, and uh, uh, by by highlighting uh, the good example from the respective countries aside from that also this compendium comprises of best practices for using geospatial data in which the criteria is also I just learned yeah <laughs> by looking at the book the so-called four A's availability accessibility affordability and, and weather is also actionable as well as the four P people practices processes policies and the three I integration innovation and interdisciplinary and is being also showcased uh, some of the examples. And uh, the competitive also talk about trends evolving subject needs as well as policy recommendation to accelerate the implementation of plan of action, especially the uh, referring to the, the second phase, yeah, uh, the, the what the space plus for our, our earth and future with regard to Southeast Asia. So I think this would be very interesting uh, examples that colleagues will share share a bit later on and also showcasing the various potentials yeah, that uh, we could strengthen our collaboration across countries going forward. So we, with that, uh, I would like to congratulate everybody that has contributed as well as uh, extend our utmost appreciation and thanks. Thank you very much. Terima kasih, Ibu. Uh, now allow me... Allow me to now invite uh, Ms. Tiziana Bonapache uh, to share some of the key messages from the compendium. So it's my pleasure to share um, five uh, key messages uh, that have emerged uh, from this compendium, which, uh, as Ibu Armida informed us, um, is focused on Southeast Asia. And we focused on Southeast Asia at the request of our members and associate members. Um, next, please. So the first message is that there has been a marked increase in the number and diversity of space applications in Southeast Asia. And the compendium showcases over 60 good practices uh, that have emerged. Um, and in particular, in this edition, we have shown how space and geospatial information has played an essential part in the management and response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And as a result of this uh, contribution of space and geospatial information, many countries in Southeast Asia have launched their own national and subnational dash dashboards to leverage geospatial uh, applications. Um, and we have uh, the good fortune today of having key decision makers with us um, from Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand, who will be providing further details. Next, please. So the compendium is accompanied by um, a good practices database and dashboard, which ESCAP has set up on its website. And um, this dashboard um, not only helps to showcase the good practices that have emerged, but it also helps the Secretariat to track implementation of the space action plans, um, uh, the space actions across the six thematic areas and 34 sub-themes uh, of the action plan. Um, the dashboard tracks uh, implementation not only uh, uh, for Southeast Asia, but for the entire Asia Pacific region. And uh, the database is tracking a substantial increase in the number of good practices over the last four years, 
and we have evidence of 600 individual actions that have been implemented since 2018. Uh, and this diversity is across all thematic areas. The focus still remains on disaster risk reduction, disaster risk mitigation, um, and relatedly climate change adaptation, but we also see a notable increase in the management of natural resources. Next, please. Um, the second message is that space and geospatial information applications play and will play a critical role in accelerating progress towards the achievement of the SDGs. And uh, the rather concerning um, trend here is that uh, the region, uh, not only Southeast Asia, but the whole of Asia Pacific is not on track to meet any of the SDGs by 2030. And uh, so this really, um, the contribution of space applications and geospatial information uh, become critical tools uh, for policymakers to develop and execute evidence-based policies and strengthen decision-making that addresses the multi-dimensional challenges that are undermining the progress in the achievement of SDGs. And as you can see from the uh, bar chart uh, on the, the right of uh, sorry, the left of your screen, um, it's the climate change goal in particular where the regression is most marked um, and sustainable consumption and production uh, as well. Um, so there are key examples in the compendium to show the linkages and to show where space applications can be particularly useful. And the goals we have identified are goal one on no poverty, goal 11 on sustainable cities and communities, goal 12, responsible consumption and production, and goal 13 on climate action. Next, please. And so emerging from these findings, um, as we discussed this morning in the plenary, uh, Space Plus for our Earth and Future offers a pathway for transcending the traditional ways of space applications. And uh, our executive secretary uh, talked about data, geospatial data being made accessible, available, affordable, and uh, actionable. Um, for people, practices, processes, and policies. And the Space Plus for our Earth and Future is to, is, is centered on four pillars that seek to leverage innovative digital technologies as a foundational element of Space Plus, um, and including and engaging end users in multiple sectors, managing the data and information uh, more efficiently and enhancing the partnerships. Um, next, please. And the fourth industrial revolution has really um, led to processes that are transformational and particularly in the use of artificial intelligence and big data analytics, it has augmented the potential contribution of space applications and geospatial data. Next, please. So the fourth message is that given all these very fast evolving developments and exciting developments, I think inspiring developments, I would add, um, the need for knowledge sharing, for technical support, and for expert training remains consistently high. And in the plenary later this afternoon, we will be presenting to you the findings of the evaluation of the first phase of implementation of the action plan. And this is one of the key findings that emerges from that evaluation. Um, so 
the other you know inspiring aspect of this work is that asia pacific is so highly diverse and asia pacific has some of the most advanced technologically advanced innovators um and it also has very high disaster risk and lower capacity countries so countries with special situations and that really lends itself to regional cooperation so this space applications program is centered on the escap secretariat facilitating the knowledge sharing from the advanced to the disaster vulnerable uh countries and and so there is really much scope uh, for us to continue to accelerate this kind of knowledge sharing and and sharing of expertise um and the space faring countries are highly committed and they are also generously committed and and that is another reason um why we are really keen to see an acceleration of phase 2 um and then my final slide uh, next please is the policy recommendations that emerge and the policy recommendations are centered around the pillars of space plus um and we have further details in terms of how the policy recommendations evolve in southeast asia i think our respective country representatives will be saying more on this later um and uh, so the key here is really once again um to strengthen the coordination among countries to strengthen the regional policy coordination and the regional efforts uh, as we start or as we kick off um the implementation of phase 2 of the plan of action so i will stop there uh mitch and hand it back to you thank you thank you very much tiziana uh, at this point uh, i'd like to turn over the proceedings to mr kuran wang uh he will facilitate the sharing of perspectives by our distinguished panel members mr kuran please oh, thank you very much mish so it's indeed uh my honor to facilitate the sharing of the country's perspective by ministers head of delegation uh, head of a state space agency and delegations from southeast asian countries uh to begin uh, may i invite uh, his excellency uh mr jovel joseph Mosiano Jr, Director General of the Philippine Space Agency to deliver his remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. A pleasant afternoon to everybody, uh distinguished delegates, excellencies. It is indeed an honor and privilege to be here today for this launching of this uh compendium. Uh first of all, I congratulate ESCAP on the launch of this second report, the Geospatial Practices for Sustainable Development. in Southeast Asia 2022 a compendium the Philippines takes pleasure in the inclusion in the compendium of our country's policy and institutional development initiatives practices and applications in geospatial information and digital technologies we have uh, tried to enthusiastically uh, capture in a consolidated fashion the country's efforts in space science and technology applications for disaster risk reduction and resilience management of natural resources social development energy and climate change digital transformation connectivity and bridging the digital divide as you know the philippines is a maritime archipelagic nation that is now really realizing the importance of leveraging space science and technology applications for national imperatives for resilience and economic growth and development I'd like to uh, thank the ESCAP in this uh, brief remarks of mine for giving us an opportunity to be part of this compendium and for this meaningful launch event today. The Philippine Space Agency or PhilSA acknowledges the efforts of the Department of Science and Technology of the Philippines for substantive contributions to the work of the UN ESCAP and subsequently to this compendium. These activities of the Department of Science and Technology are now being carried forward and built upon 
by the Philippine Space Agency. The DOST and PILSTA continue to work together in expanding space and geospatial capabilities, leveraging innovative digital technologies towards achieving the sustainable development goals. So finally, we hope that through this compendium uh, within and perhaps beyond these pages, we can further strengthen regional cooperation and collaboration on space applications for development. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marciano. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Mago uh, Pinadiotito, uh, the Deputy Chairman for Policy and Development, National Research and Innovate Innovation Agency of Indonesia, to deliver his remarks. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Excellencies, Minister, the Director of the Space Agency in the Asia Pacific regions, of course, the Executives and Secretary of UN SCAP, uh, distinguished delegates, and also participants in this uh, event. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the National Research and Innovation Agency, BRIN, Indonesia. I would like to congratulate and also to convey the high appreciation to the uh, SCAP Secretariat in the preparing and also the launching of the Combendium 2022 with the support from the SCAP Resub member states and also in providing the information and material related to the implementation of the Plan of Action in Phase 1, 2018 to 2022. As I mentioned in the opening by the chairman of the BRIN and the minister of the BAPNAS in opening the, uh, this uh, conference, Indonesia has very high concern in the acceleration of the achievement in the Sustainable Development uh, Goals or the SDGs. Indonesia put the space application for the SDGs achievement into among of the high priorities activities. Uh, during the phase one of the plan of the action implementation, exactly Indonesia has contributed to the company uh, through the conducting around 14 main topics under the SDGs activities by utilization, utilization of the space technology and geospatial data. Among the activities are uh, sustainable field program, as well as the use of the remote sensing, uh, remote sensing data for the marine and also the coastal application. Of course, there is many uh, application and also the success story, but indeed here in the topic of the early planting prediction application for the sustainable rice field program, in this related to the put security, Landsat and also the Sentinel uh, second uh, data were utilized to determine the plantation phase, early planting, delay in planting, and also the plant uh, phenology for the several uh, season. I think one, one year, but a plus uh, uh, into the two years. It is very uh, uh, affected by the climate change phenomena so that it can be determined the rise on non-rice crops and estimate the index of the rice or paddy planting on existing paddy fields so that it will be able to estimate the total uh, priority paddy field to be protected to create the sustainable paddy fields. In the future, I think uh, this application will be increasing the need as the basis for the policy making consideration in determining the which party field uh, should be maintained as the permanent party field and should not be converted into the any reason and which party field may be converted into the other uh, land uses. Thing with the development of the remote sensing technology and use of the artificial intelligence AI, it has the potential accelerate 
to the progress of using vision in future. To conclude, again, uh, we hope that the Convenium 20, uh, 2022 could be the basis of the our further endeavor in discovery in the future to strengthen the collaboration through the enhanced space application for sustainable development. Uh, thank you again to the SCAP and also our colleague from this uh, uh, technology. Hopefully we can again to extend our uh, international collaboration. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Pinadito, uh, for your remarks. Uh, next, uh, may, I may I invite uh, Mr. Tatia uh, Chunchangan, the Deputy Executive Director, Geo Geoinformatics and Space Technology Development Agency of Thailand, uh, to deliver his remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Excellency, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for opportunity uh, to be here to address some remarks. And uh, this is the second time that we involve and engage to the, the opening of the compendium. Anyway, uh, the 2022 compendium elaborates many outstanding cases from ASCAP members, member states, especially the Southeast Asian nations it tells us that space technology and its applications are undoubted and proven as the indispensable tools to respond and battle the challenge issues and situations in our region. Thailand has committed ourselves to fully support ASCAP and members and member states to implement the Asia Pacific Plan of Actions on Space Applications for Sustainable Development from 2018 to 2030. For me myself, the compendium is just like a book that referred me that how our uh, our uh, our agencies uh, around across the, the region apply these technology to serve the country, to serve the people. Let's just look around, look at the book and find the idea, oh, this is how they apply and embrace this technology to make a well-being for people what we find here, mostly since we have been working in this area for, for years, most of the applications falls into disasters, risk reductions, natural resources management. But we found here the increase and the rise of new practices and it's applicable. Such a uh, significantly on the in the social human development we found it and we we are very happy with it it means that uh, our technologies have served the well-being of the people not just the scientists we are not only the one who use it and now we are trying to serve people that's why i think this compendium share quite a lot of significant reference and it also induce of what we are about to do next that's how we do it and for thailand we found that not only in thailand but also in the region it's still like four a's people still cannot access to the data is still not applicable. It's still not actionable. And it's still not affordable. And this is how we are trying to, and we are pushing and also pulling our 
stakeholders to develop the platform that Rin just mentioned before this, to make people, to make the data, to make the information useful and beneficial to the people, not only the government agencies. We are thinking about using this kind of technology to develop social, economic, and make benefit in the economic aspects. So not focus on users. We also focus on the developers, academic people, for them to develop. And this is how we are going to move forward with the phase two of the plan of action to serve the four pillars that we just mentioned. And this is how we do it. And thank you very much for inviting me here. And I would like to lastly in, uh, emphasize that the international and regional corporations is uh, essential and uh, key success to the use uh, to develop the sustainable development in this region. So I would like to reiterate general and international cooperation that is for sustainable development in our region. The instance of geospatial information applications for agricultural monitoring in Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar, the project under the Lanchang Macro Corporation, funded by China, and building the Pan Asia Partnership for Geospatial Air Pollution Information Projects, sponsored by the Republic of Korea. Other great representations of productive regional cooperation. And that's why I insist, and I would like to focus that cooperation is the key. And I would like to encourage ASCAP member states and other regional and stakeholders to take actions, take more actions, contributing more in the region initiatives and providing appropriate supports. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chotakan. Uh, last but not least, uh, our next speaker is Mr. Ronaldo Tong. Deputy Executive Director, Designate Office for Space Technology and Industry, Economic Development Board of Singapore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Karan. Good afternoon, Your Excellencies and distinguished delegates. I hope you had a good lunch. Uh, firstly, I would like to congratulate ASCAP for the successful compilation of this compendium. Uh, and you know, I think the amount of effort that put into it you can tell by the number of pages. Mr. Tatia described it as a book. There's a lot of content in there. So really a great job and great effort. Um, it is a privilege for Singapore uh, to be able to contribute to this compendium, but more importantly to the geospatial practices uh, for sustainable development in our region, Southeast Asia. Um, Space-based applications plays an unseen, often unseen, yet an indes indispensable part of our daily lives. For example, in our daily commute, when we go to work, when we come back, in the food we eat. And even, for example, when, when my delegation flew here uh, to, to Jakarta from Singapore, we also had in-flight entertainment and things like that, right? Space is both a vertical um, economic sector and a horizontal, meaning that it, it, it has a lot of adjacencies in various sectors and they will transform not just the space sector but also all these other sectors including the green domain that we are focusing on in this conference so in this regard the office for space technology and industry we abbreviate it to call it austin um, is singapore's national space uh, office we were established to harness these developments so one of our key strategy and it's quite aligned with the space plus for earth and future the fourth pillar which is enhancing partnerships you know one of our key strategy is to anchor on synergistic partnerships between multi-stakeholders between private players the public players between the research institutes and institutes of higher learning because we believe that a single strand is weak but multi-strands are strong 
So Singapore's space journey actually started since the 1990s. And it started with various entities starting to step up to the plate to make progress in the space sector. Starting from the National University of Singapore's Center for Remote Imaging, Sensing and Processing, we call it CRISP, like crispy chicken, but CRISP, right? Uh, it was actually set up in the early 90s as Singapore's pioneer uh, center for the reception and processing of images from EO satellites. And since then, they have used it for many, many sustainable uh, development goals. And later on, there was also the Singapore Space and Technology Limited. I think people will know them as SSTL, was set up in 2007. And they were focused on building the space ecosystem. Right. All these players are very important uh, for Singapore because they come together and then they grow the local space ecosystem. And then we can use that space technology to benefit uh, and serve sustainable goals, for example. So I'll raise one example which we put into the compendium. I, I do not want to uh, say all the examples. If not, we'll never finish. So one example is a very recent uh, partnership uh, that resulted in the launch of our first commercial high-performance Micro satellite with a fully polarimetric synthetic aperture radar. Um, so this was this is known as NUSA. So unique in Southeast Asia, there's a lot of clouds, there's a lot of uh, you know weather. So SAR technology in particular helps because it helps to map the ground uh, even despite weather. All right, and it was only launched into space about four months ago, and they will be used for commercial and government uh, purposes. Right. Uh, for example, Earth observation in for natural disaster damage assessment, oil spill detection, uh, and all these various functions that can enable sustainable development in our region. And this particular satellite was made possible in a partnership between Austin as well as DSO National Laboratories, as well as many local research partners and in international industry partners. So I think this is a testament for the power of partnership. So more detailed contributions um, from Singapore as well as uh, you know not just Austin but our various private and public partners in our ecosystem towards the sustainable development goals in Southeast Asia can be found in the compendium thanks to the wonderful team of editors that put it all together we also look forward to reading through in detail I must confess I haven't gone through all the pages of the compendium but I would love to especially with the time flying back eventually to Singapore um, to read through and, and understand all the contributions that all our ASCAP partners uh, have done towards sustainable development. And I would love to glean many insights on how we can do that better for in Singapore too. So thank you so much. And we look forward to really uh, doing this together with everyone here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Tong. Uh, we still have a few minutes uh, to ask maybe one or two questions from our audience. Uh, would anyone wants to ask question from the floor? I'm looking forward to a short question because uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, okay, please state your name and uh, indicate to whom you your question is directed to. Thank you, Karan. I'll oh, be very I short. <laughs> My name is Jun Yu from uh, World Meteorological Organization. And uh, uh, thank you all the panelists to share your experiences. And uh, my question will go to uh, Mr. Tong from Singapore because I'm based in Singapore. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, uh, your, 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 your experience, uh, like uh, one of the key message it delivers is the partnership. And uh, my question will be to, well, could you elaborate a bit more of the, what the key lesson you learned from your engagement with private sector and in the, in the area of a space application, of, co of course, for satellite development. Thank you. Thanks so much for your question and I uh, look forward to catching up in Singapore as well. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, what we learned engaging the private sector firstly is that the private sector has so much innovation. They are very nimble. Um, the public sector, on the other hand, tends to be a little bit more bureaucratic, more rules to follow. So we can actually leverage the strength of the private sector, right? For example, a trade association like SSTL or the private companies. And they have, they are full of ideas. They are full of energy. Um, they are full of inspiration as well. And I think that's where if we can, uh, bring together that kind of private and public partnership, uh, not, not just in terms of give, sharing money or, you know, sharing ideas, sharing talent, sharing, uh, efforts. Uh, it will be a very strong network that can help 
grow the space sector to fulfill all the sustainable development goals that we talked about. So I think we need to recognize the strengths of the private sector as well as the strengths of the public sector, bring them together. So that's the big lesson that I've learned. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Tong. It's an excellent uh, reply. Uh, can I ask any more questions from the floor? Okay, uh, I see. Uh, okay, Dr. Daloni, yeah, from Thailand. Thank you. Um, Daloni Pramchot uh, from Tista, Thailand. Uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, due to the companion feature or the sector example of space and geospatial application to add one sustainable development, my question is what your recommendation to scale up the application across the region where applicable? Thank you. Sorry, to whom uh, your question is directed to? Uh, to to our speaker. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the the questions is how to right, <laughs> right, and. Um, when we talk about uh, the applications, we also talk about uh, the data, the information. What I'm not sure how how ex what exactly should I answer, to be honest. But the point is, we need to engage more. Uh, the technology is there. We found in two years uh, since the COVID nineteen that. Only this remote sensing, EAS alone, are not enough. When we face the COVID-19, we talked to 19 organizations across nine ministry. They all use different protocol, different type of data, how to integrate that's the very difficult for us at that time but one of the most difficult is to convince them that instead of they have 19 dashboard 19 screen to talk in the room let's just have one we have to walk around across the ministry to convince and how to do that we come up to the api so the technology is there but how to so what we are trying to do is just engage and try to push them to see the end of what we are trying to do and it's going to be beneficial for everyone. It's going to be faster, more efficient, more effective, in timely manner. And we can do quite a lot of things. So we'll find that upright uh, from now on, we'll find, you'll find the applications that integrate more data, more sensors, more disciplines, to solve the problem, not just uh, illegal forestry uh, deforestation, but we are trying to fight poverty. We need a lot. And this is what we are going to do with uh, technologies integrated with other disciplines and other stakeholders that we never know, and they know they never know that we exist before. And I'm not sure that I answered the question, but uh, I hope that it will tell something. I have a rejoinder to that. 
in the Philippines, we have been studying the so-called value chains for space data. Um, essentially, these are components of, uh, of what, which when manifest and working together can create socioeconomic benefit and value from space data at the end of that chain. So I think in terms of the question in, in terms of scaling up this on a regional level, I think we need to also consider and look at regional, on a regional level, this value chain capabilities across different countries in Southeast Asia. Uh, for example, uh, the satellites that are there, and uh, this earlier before this session, uh, Bryn presented some plan for constellation of satellites. And of course, the second part is access to these satellites and the data uh, capacity to download this data and host it and to act and to interrogate the data. So uh, I guess individual countries are looking at their capabilities in country for deriving value from space. And so uh, working together through UNSCAP, we can look at the regional regional scale of this value chain and where countries can complement each other and work together and towards creating value at the end of that chain for the countries that are involved. So that's pretty joined her on that. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you all for your uh, uh, questions and answers and your interest in this uh, discussion. So now may I ask His Excellency uh, Ms. Alice Japana to give copies of the Compendium 222 to our distinguished speakers. So this will be followed by photo, uh, a photo taking. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. 